with Nigeria producing 700,000 barrels of oil per day below the stipulated OPEC output quota of 1.83 million barrels and zero sales repeat, uh, receipts rather, from crude oil in the month of July, oil theft is hitting Nigeria's economy harder than ever before. In the past few weeks, the government has been on a mission to reverse the trend. Arise business and energy correspondent Oyi Sunday visited Yoki in Delta State and witnessed the preliminary investigation on oil theft in the region. We have not exported crude from Boni since March. We have not exported crude from Pocado since April. If we put all these numbers together, you can see where we are bleeding. We can say whatever we want to say. Bottom line is that the treasury is not getting the revenue. For the government, there are no excuses for the negative trends recorded in the sector. And the heavy downpour here does not suffice on this mission to investigate the discovery of an illegal pipeline that has been in operation for over nine years. The movement is on. Through Yokri Road in Ogulaga Kingdom in Delta State, officials of the Nigeria National Petroleum Company, National Petroleum Investment Management Services, including the Chief of Defense Staff and a staff of a private security firm, Tantita Security Services, all make their way to the swamps, where two out of 12 illegal pipelines have been discovered. For most here, it's an unfamiliar terrain. To avoid a fall, we walk behind those who have gone before. Almost two kilometers from the seashore, we arrive at a spot where pipelines are being uncovered. A further walk gives a clearer picture. Two illegal connections have been unearthed. Officials try to make sense of what is before them. As far as we speak, we did not know of this thing until when our guy discovered it when the drill ground trotted. When was that? That was on the 1st of uh, this month of October. And he's captured in our system. Just one okay. month ago? Yes. Within this yes. TV, I have three deployments of GSF. Okay. One officer, 30 men, two gumboots, for which we, we will take care of for this line. Okay. Apart from that, I have Escravos flow, I have Otomara flow, I have Sagara, I have deployment of GSF too. Okay. Three. What you are saying is yes. that. We are private contractors. Yes, civilian contractors are, must be aware of this. The GSS around here should have known about it. Yes, shell supervisors should know about it. That's the point you're making. That if if it's if it's being informed, because no, no, no. It, it's, not, yes. it's not conditional. It's, like, yeah. it's a risk it's assessment. Assessment. I mean, What is possible so, in achieving this? No, I would not know because they are illegally no, no, no. This is what the team has come to verify. Oil is stolen for two reasons, for export and for artisanal refining. Yokri is in a position to serve both purposes. We're leaving Yokri. I'm not sure where the next stop is, but whatever the oil needs to operate, that is what this team hopes to uncover and inspect. A few meters away is an abandoned illegal refinery. The burnt vegetation and multiple oil pits are a testament to activities that have taken place here for years. It is believed the oil thieves tap oil from an idle test pipeline belonging to Shell Petroleum. It's a difficult terrain to work in. My cameraman is stuck in the mud. The theory is that the thieves channeled the oil from an active trans escravos bulk line feeding for cardos to an isolated Afremo pipeline from where they get their oil undetected. But for nine years, there are questions to be answered. What they do is they go to a particular point they tap, then they try to cover it up, possibly even plant grasses on the place so the place can become what you notice today and then nobody looks at that then they extend the paths maybe by some two three kilometers from where they usually take their product there are a lot of speculations there are a lot of uh, allegations but one thing is paramount is that nigeria is bleeding and the people that are bleeding nigeria out are nigerians there are significant collaboration between the players between the community between the security agencies and between everybody in the space and what you heard from the CDS today 
is that nobody will be spared. Whoever that has anything to do with this, they will follow every legitimate means to bring the person to book. Investigations bring the team to the Afremo platform. There are suspicions that the oil is gotten here. Shell Petroleum says it's impossible as the high pressure line has been isolated since 2013, owing to a damage. This cage has been here since 2017. 2018 has been here since 2018. Yeah. So nobody can come here because any tampering on this cage, you will, we, will, will, we will get a notification, SMS alarm, and our security operating center also is notified. We have uh, security vessels that patrol this area. Um, however, it's also possible that uh, people can make connection somewhere on the shore, then somewhere on shore before it gets to the point, they also make another connection. It's possible, I really don't know, but to come okay. here, right now, no. The vessel has been arrested here before. Yes, sir. We are not taking that thing. Okay, if you say there is no big here, which phrase of the bridge is this place? Because the TV is down. The TV is down. The TV is down. Whatever what happened is that when I open the first time, I go to Mara and the rest. With a Navy gun boat close by, they say the possibility of theft from this point is slim. But in 2017, Shell did apprehend a vessel with stolen oil from its platform. With speculations around the discovery and blames traded, one thing is sure. There's an infraction on the trans escravos five line. Uh, of course, the connection is simply a line connected to a, a test line that ended up in uh, the Afremo platform. Uh, ordinarily, that line should never con carry any crude oil, but unfortunately, bundles have uh, made, uh, made it so, and that we, we just practically confirm that it is true. How easy is it for people to do that undetected? You know, once with uh, illegal stuff, they have their time, they take their time. When they come, maybe they come in a campaign mode, have their time, and then the connivance of uh, people around that area. Like for me, from my area where I come, before anybody will come and steal in your place, somebody there must have invited him. That's our culture. So when you see those kind of things, you really need to start asking questions and then start saying, within that TEP, I have deployment of government security forces. And that's what I told, uh, I told uh, 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 the Chief of Defense staff. We have three of them on that period, one officer and 30, uh, 30 soldiers with two gunboats each for, on that line. That is just for the line. And the facilities that I have, the three of them, I also have same looking after that. So it's something that, as he said, it's, an, it's, it's a collaboration that all of us need to do. Officials say a joint investigative visit comprising the regulators, security forces, oil companies and the community will commence soon in a bid to identify and apprehend the culprits on all levels. Right from where we saw those insertions, it's a sad development. And um, I'm glad that I'm here along with uh, this group CEO, along and of course the members of the team. There will be a thorough investigation and everyone who is involved certainly will be brought to justice. There is much more to be done. Away from the facility, another discovery was made hours before our visit. Ten kilometers away in Iborodo community, a vessel loading finished products was apprehended by the private security firm. Iborodo is the immediate host community to Chevron, which is separated by a creek 25 meters apart. Only Sunday, Arise News. Okay, let's uh, have Oni Sunday to tell us more on what she saw on that trip and how that the situation, the issue of oil theft in the country really is. Oni? Oh, well, good evening. Welcome. Thank you so much for Well, I saw you all struggling the in the mud oh, yes. and the rest. I mean, that's uh, an offshore uh, platform, pipelines mm -hmm. and the rest mm -hmm. in the swamp. How easy is it really, you know, to get into that place and do all that stealing? Well, first, I'm just going to describe what I saw as really gritty mm -hmm. to, to start with. It just looked like a, a, a scene from, from a war movie, um, as it is. Um, that pathway was cleared. It's more of a forest, a very thick forest that we walked That's through. That's a swamp. That, a very, very thick one to begin mm -hmm. with. And um, you have the floating barges that actually cleared the way for us to walk through 
and you also had to be careful. It was like a 20 minute walk from the sea into um, that particular spot. And at a spot, we did see policemen uncovering other pipelines. Um, one thing that really stands out is the fact that what we saw wasn't done by amateurs, that's for sure. Mm. Because taking those pipes, these are very long, heavy pipes, into the swamp that we saw, a very difficult terrain to work with, as you saw the cameraman mm. um, got stuck, and lay those pipes. But clearly this wasn't something that was done yesterday or three years ago. And NPC claims it's actually been there for about nine years, but then there are those who believe it's been there longer um, than nine years. The explanation, really, why what they came to investigate is this. The story they got is the fact that the oil is being tapped, right, from a particular pipeline that is active. Well, Shell says, because they have about three lines, the high-pressure line, the low-pressure line, and the test line. Shell says the test line has been shot owing to a problem that it had since 2003. So ideally, nothing should be flowing through that line. So the argument is, so does it mean they are coming to your platform to take the oil directly. Shell says it is now impossible because they have a cage around the platform where you saw the helicopter mm -hmm. um, land. Yeah. So they believe that whatever connection that's being done is done away from the shore. So what they've done is while the, the A line is idle and the B and C is uh, past so oil flowing, okay. they've connected the B to the A which no one pays attention to anymore and carrying ah. out their business. So that is what the team went to verify, the possibility of this happening. But what other Nigerians want to know is how did this go on for a long time without the community members knowing about it, without Shell knowing about it. Without even the security the agents knowing about exactly. it. At the end of the day, it just shows you like what you have said. Mm -hmm. This thing has been there longer and it takes skills. Yes to get this done. Oh, you're off again yeah. tomorrow mm -hmm. on another adventure, yeah. discovering more oil theft. Let's mm -hmm. not forget, Nigeria as it stands right now, 1.8 million barrels per day is our quota given mm -hmm. to us by OPEC, but we are at 700,000 yes. barrels per day. Really poor, our economy is suffering for it. So with what you have seen, mm -hmm. do you think that we're actually on our way to seeing the end to oil theft in Nigeria? Um, honestly, I, 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 can, I cannot answer that confidently at this point because at the moment we're actually throwing allegations around. Um, I think we're really yet to, to hit the nail or really have hit the hammer on the nail in terms of addressing where this is coming from. It's a preliminary investigation that's going on at the moment, but is the government ready to name names? That's the issue. We're seeing the political will right now. I mean, like we mentioned mm -hmm. in the Borodo community, another vessel was arrested, but this is an organized crime that has gone on for many years for so long and thinking that we can actually curb this within a few months well i also wait to see how that will play out because it has enriched it has empowered communities within the area as well we're not talking about even the vessels that take it outside our shores you have artisanal refining that's been going on for years I remember we had the fuel sca um, scarcity or rather the um, contaminated fuel earlier yes, this year yes. when we visited port harcourt some people around the community say they were not aware of any fuel scarcity because they actually get their product directly from these artisanal miners to do what they need to do. So you consider the players that are involved here, and there's so many players that are being named, and that's what the government wants to really investigate, the security agencies, the oil companies themselves, and even the government as well. And uh, using the, the technology, we're seeing that a situation where oil theft and those who are breaking into the pipelines, you can get those reports real time. Yes. Do you think technology, how far do you think it's actually gone in helping us find? Well, Shell says it has employed that in some parts of the country and they hope to also put that mm -hmm. here in Delta State. I think for something that's gone on for a very long time, I think the absence of technology probably made it also very difficult um, for them to detect. But the sincerity of it all is what we're hoping, you know, will come to the fore during this investigation. It's our natural resource that we're losing here. Yes, there are people who are conniving with these thieves to make money off it. And I can only hope that the government really addresses this seriously and goes after the corporate, mm. you know, irrespective of status. Oh, great. It's all right. I mean, it's good you're returning to Delta State again, uh, this time in Warrior. I'm going to the Burudo community. I'm sure Please you're going to... Please be safe out there. I I'm welcome. sure you're Because when I was in Port Haka the last time, we were told that our helicopter could not go beyond a certain point or else it would be shot down. Mm. So be safe out there as you do the stellar work that you always do thank in bringing us those reports. Only Sunday. Thank you. We say thank you for joining thank us tonight you. on the program. Appreciate it.